All right, let's move on to lesson six of our statistics unit entitled Describing the Center of a Distribution Using the Mean. Our I can statement is I can define the center of a data distribution by a fair share value called the mean. So look at this. This mean is what? It's a type of center that we're going to use to describe our data distribution. Our other I can statement is I can connect the fair share concept with a mathematical formula for finding the mean. So our second I can is what is this fair share model and how can we express it using a mathematical formula for the mean? All right. So let's look at our first example. Recall that in lesson three, Robert, a sixth grader at Roosevelt Middle School, investigated the number of hours of sleep sixth graders get on school nights. Today, he is going to make a short report to the class on his investigation. Here's his report. I took a survey of 29 sixth graders asking, how many hours of sleep per night do you usually get when you have school the next day? The first thing I had to do was to organize the data. I did this by drawing a dot plot. So here is our dot plot from the previous lesson. Part of our lessons last week was identify what we thought was a centering point of the data, the spread of the data, and the shape of the data. So for my data, looking at the dot plot, I'd say that the typical number of hours sixth graders sleep get when they have school the next day is around eight or nine, because that is what most students said, and the values are kind of in the middle. I also noticed that the data were spread out from the center by about three or four hours in both directions. The shape of the distribution is kind of like a mound. To be more specific, what shape do we see? Well, let's look. If I draw this, I see that this is slightly left skewed because it has a tail on this left side. Okay. So, how is Robert thinking about the center? So, Robert, if we refer back here, He's thinking that the center is 8 or 9. Right here in our text is around 8 or 9. And why is that? Well, because it's where most of my values are. However, we have another person called Michelle who's thinking about it a different way. What she wants to do is this. Michelle is Robert's classmate. She liked his report but has a really different thought about the turn in the center of the number of hours of sleep. Her idea is to even out the data in order to determine a typical or center value. So what we're asking is, what is this? What do we mean by she wants to even out the data? Well, first thing to notice is, what does this word even mean? What does even mean? If I want to make something even, even can mean two things. It can mean numbers like two, four, six, or it can mean equal. If we want to even something out, it means we want to make something equal. So we want to make our data equal across. So let's look at this exercise. Suppose that Michelle asked 10 of her classmates for the number of hours they usually sleep in their schools next day. So she's picking 10 new students, and this is their responses. How would Robert organize the data? What do you think Robert would say is the center of these data points and why? Well, Robert would probably organize his data as a dot plot. And so he's going to have a 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And he would have 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, and 1. So he would say, I'd organize it by a dot plot. Why? Well, that's how he did it for this problem. And what would he say the center is? Well, he'd probably say the center is 8 because that's where most of my data is. It's my highest point. Okay, now let's look at this question, though, for number two. 
Do you think his value is a good measure for the center of Michelle's data set? Why or why not? So would his assumption of 8 be a good center? Well, it probably wouldn't be a good center. And why is that? Well, I have a lot of data over here. I have four dots over here. And I have four dots in this eight. So my center looks like it's actually somewhere right in the middle, not at that highest point. OK, so let's continue exploring the difference between the highest point for the center and why it might not be the best way to find the center. Michelle's center is called the mean. How we find the mean is you find the total number of hours of sleep for each of the 10 students. That is 90 hours. So what I'm doing is I'm taking all of these numbers and I'm adding them up. And when I add them up, I get 90. She has 90 unifix cubes and she gives each of the 10 students the number of cubes that equals the number of hours of sleep each had reported. She then asks each of the 10 students to connect their cubes in a stack and put their stacks on the table to compare them. She then has them share their cubes with each other until they all have the same number of cubes in their stacks when they are done sharing. Okay, you guys won't be doing 3, 4, or 5 just because of time, but we're going to go through it. Work in a group. Each group of students gets 90 cubes. Make stacks of 10 cubes representing the number of hours for each of the 10 students. Using Michelle's method, how many cubes in each of the 10 stacks are there when they are done sharing? So there would be 10 students. This one would get 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This one would get 10. This one would have that 8. 8, 11. And they're going to split it up until they each have the same amount. Now, how much do you think each person would have? Well, I have 90 cubes total. There's 10 people. So what would I do? I would do 90 divided by 10, and I would get 9. So each person would end up with 9 cubes. Note that one cube represents one hour of sleep. Interpret your answer for exercise 3 in terms of number per hours of sleep. What does this number of cubes in each stack represent? What is this value called? So this is asking you this. What does this 9 represent? And then, what would we call this in mathematics? How did we get this answer? Well, this 9 represents 9 hours of sleep. And what this value is called is it is called the mean. Remember, from fifth grade, our mean is we add all the values up, and then we divide by however many numbers we added. All right, suppose that the student who told Michelle is up seven hours changes his data entry to eight hours. You'll need to get one more cue from your teacher. What does Michelle's procedure now produce for a center of the new set of data? What would you do with the extra cube to make Michelle's procedure work? Well, here we have this problem. We're going from 90 cubes to now we're increasing by one because he says, oops, I made a mistake. I actually sleep eight hours. So I'd have 91 divided by 10. Now, this I can easily do, and I get 9.1 hours. But in real life, when I'm working with these cubes, what would I do with that extra cube? Well, I'd have to slice it, or I'd have to cut it into 10 equal parts so each person could get that 1 tenth extra. OK, number six. Interpret Michelle's fair share procedure by developing a mathematical formula that results in finding the fair share value without actually using cubes. Be sure that you can explain clearly how the fair share procedure and the mathematical formula are related to each other. Just to save time, since it's a Wednesday, we're just focusing on this. We're going to just develop a mathematical formula. So what did I do here? Well, I add up all my values. And then I divide by the total amount of numbers. 
total amount of numbers or the total amount of numbers added. So we don't actually have a mathematical formula like we do in our geometry units like area equals base times height. We just have this phrase, this setup. We add up all the values and we divide by the total amount of numbers. So what we did here is we added up all of these values. And then I divide by the total amount of numbers. How many numbers did I add? Well, I added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm dividing by that 10. All right, number two. Suppose that Robert asked five sixth graders how many pets each had. Their responses were 2, 6, 2, 4, and 1. Robert showed the data with cubes as follows. Note that one student has one pet, two students have two pets, one student has four, and one student has six pets. He then represented on a dot plot. So we see a dot plot right here. Okay, let's represent this dot plot using our unifix cubes. So I'm going to have one, one, two, One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and these four. So now we want to do what's called that evening out method. So I'm going to look. How many students did I pull? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five students. So I'm going to spread them out evenly across 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what do I need to do? I'm just going to start spreading them out until I have the same number in each row. I only have 5 students, so I'm not going to go to 6. So I'm just spreading this out right here. Are all of these unifix cubes that same length? No. So I need to just move some a little bit more. Are they all the same length? No. How about now? Yeah, now I have the same number in each row. So what is my mean or my fair share? Well, it's three because each person has three pets. I took those unifix cubes and I'm just spraying them out so that each number is the same in each row, in each column. So let's check it again. Let's check it using my math formula. My fair share was three. Let's check it using that mean. So I have 2, 6, 2, 4, and 1. So 2, 6, 2, 4, and 1. And remember with my mean, what did I do? I add up all my numbers. So this is 2 plus 6 is 8, plus 2 is 10. Then I have plus 4 and 1 is 5. This would be... 15. So that is my step one. I add up all my numbers. Step one is I add up all my numbers and then I divide by the total amount of numbers I added. So I added one number, two number, three number, four number, five numbers. So I'm going to divide by five. 15 divided by five is three. And look, my mean matches this fair share value. All right, we're going to skip this one. And we're going to skip this one since it's a Wednesday. Okay, let's watch this video on mean computation. All right, kids, today we are going to learn how to find the mean of a data set using a balance point. Now, a balance point is the spot where one side is equal to the other side, okay? Like this, like a balance beam, that's the good spot. Maybe a spoon's heavier on one end, I don't know, let's see. Uh, yep, yep, so this side's longer, this side's shorter because it's heavier over here. You gotta find the balance point in order to make things equal on either side. 
And that's the concept we're using today. Um, let me give you an example. Imagine I offer a whole bunch of cookies to 10 kids, okay? Some kids will eat more than others. Well, I want to find out what is the average amount of cookies that one of these kids would eat. So here we go. Take a look, please. I want you to imagine that three of the kids eat one cookie. They're not selfish. They just like, you know, one cookie. Two cookies go to two kids. Another two kids eat three cookies each. Another two kids eat five cookies each. And this little boy, he ate seven. He likes cookies. What are you going to do? Now, we're going to move all of these towards the middle to find our balance point. And the way I do this, I take one from this end and one from this end. And one at a time, I move them one space at a time towards the middle. Like so. Boop. And we're going to do it again. Boop. And 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 again. And now all of our little dots are in a row right above three. So the average numbers, number of cookies that the kids ate was three cookies. On to a different situation. I want you to imagine that there's this very small school and there's only ten classes in the entire school, okay? And each class has kids in it, obviously. We want to find out the average number of kids in a classroom at this school. So please take a look. We have one class in the school that has only 12 kids. One class has 13, one class has 14, two classes has 15, four classes have 16, and one class has 17. Let's find the average number. Same idea. We're going to move one at a time. Boop, and again. 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 And we have our final decision. 15 kids to a class. That is the average number of kids in a class at this small school. Boys and girls, I really hope you enjoy finding the mean as a balance point. It's a different way of doing things. I hope you like it. Have a nice day. Come back next year when we are going to take over the world. So here is your exit ticket. It was a short one today. When you are done with your exit ticket, please go to Dreambox. and work on that until we're done with our lesson with the regular class. All right, good job today, guys.